Spiritual resistance is when you know in your heart you love God. But there's something in you that resists God. You can't understand. It's like there's like two persons living in you. You are so excited about God. You want to serve him, but you can't live fornication. You are so excited about God. You want to serve him, but you can't pray. You can't fast. You can't study the Bible. Something about you is so I told you that the cry of the cross is it is finished. It cannot finish at Calvary and continue in your house. You notice that thing attacking you at 18 and you didn't do anything. Now you are getting married and that's when it comes up. When you notice that bondage and you are having those dreams regularly and it didn't matter. Now in your 40s, you can't get anything together. You never took authority. You just kept acting as if there was nothing. Brothers and sisters, Satan never wakes up and becomes nice. If you don't cast him out, he will cast you down. If you don't cast him out, he will cast you down. If you don't cast him out, he will cast you down. You make the choice. How do you know that there's bondage? I, I'm just going to, I'm not going to get into explanations. Just, just look at it. You see, the first one that you can easily notice is called spiritual resistance. Spiritual resistance is when you know in your heart you love God. But there's something in you that resists God. You can't understand. It's like there's two persons living in you. You are so excited about God. You want to serve him, but you can't live fornication. You are so excited about God. You want to serve him, but you can't pray. You can't fast. You can't study the Bible. Something about you is so passionate about God and something inside you is so against God. Pastor, what do you mean? He said, if you go to Mark chapter 5, you see a man. The Bible called him a demoniac. He ran to Jesus. He bowed and worshipped. And the next thing he said is, what have we got to do with you? Get out from us. No, no. This guy, first of all, worshipped. That means his heart was submitting to the Lord. But there's something else in him saying no to. Are you hearing me here today? There's another personality. And you need to deal with That's one of the ways to know. I want to serve God. I want to serve God. But some Sundays you wake up, no passion. Some days it's as if I, you, don't, you don't even care about God. Another way to know is compulsive behavior. That's how to know a demon is involved. Compulsive behavior. Compulsive lying. In the second service, I was at the back there and a young lady came to me. I, I think I prayed for her about a month or so ago. She walked in and she said, Pastor, that was about some month, a month ago or so. He said, Pastor, I heard what you are saying. There is no night I don't watch pornography. I'm awake until after midnight just watching that. Pastor is killing me. What do I do? And I prayed for her and I said, somebody should counsel her and all that. She was there today to say, from that day till now I have not. God broke it. Come on, are you hearing me? Compulsive behavior. <laughs> a man and the wife traveled down last week Tuesday to come and see me. They're not from this state. Came in down. I had to call somebody that is a counselor for addiction. I said, please, can you talk to them? The wife said, the wife said, I am leaving the marriage. The man said, begging. And talked and talked and talked. He said, no, the marriage is over. And the man now called me and said, please, we respect you. We honor you as a man of God. We want to see you. I don't want my home to break. I said, what's the problem? He said, Betty, no. <laughs> no, you're not hearing me. And there are some of you here now. Naira Betty is holding your heart. <laughs> no, are you looking at me? <laughs> you are waiting for the day the thing go line up. <laughs> Compulsion. Before they saw me. You see, the week the wife said she was packing up. They wanted to buy a car. They had four million to buy the car. They wanted to just deposit it because they wanted a bigger car. They deposit it and then pay the man later. So they agreed on that and all of that. She left. Within two days, he has bet the four million. No, you didn't hear. 
<laughs> Four million is gone. When I told them I can't see them immediately, I said, I, I can only see you next week, Tuesday. Come. From that day, I told them. On the Monday, they were supposed to see me on Tuesday. The man knelt down. He has begged the wife. The wife said, I'm not. to his account because she said I transferred to her account. She has, he has told the wife I've cancelled everything I'm not doing anything. That's what see me on Tuesday. This is a man that is begging to recover. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Can you imagine? Brothers and sisters that money was, I was telling my wife the woman told me he said between the time the money was transferred in the money and my taking my bath to come out to go and do what I was supposed to do with the money, the money has gone. <laughs> so I told the man, what incentive are you giving me now to ask her to stay? And there's some, some of you are looking at me now acting as if it's not you. <laughs> Your own is my door. Your own is smoking. Your own is drinking. Your own is one bondage. I come in the name of the Lord. Whatever is holding your destiny, turn you loose in the name of Jesus. Some other people is negative visitations. Their dream is always one funny thing. Somebody is coming to sleep with them. Somebody is coming to attack them. Strange infirmities. Sickness has no cure. No, no definition. I, I, I was talking with somebody just a few minutes ago before coming out. I can't define the sickness. He said, for years we have gone from hospital to hospital. They can't diagnose what is wrong. But they can see it. Brothers and sisters, that is a sign that a demon is involved. That thing moving up and down your body, and you go here, they say scan, go there, they say scan. Brothers and sisters, no microscope can see Obanje. No demon. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't hear me. <laughs> no, 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 no scanning machine can see it. Can see a demon. The way people are looking at me. There's a, uh, have you ever gone to a doctor before? And they say, okay, stand there. You stand there. They take the x-ray. Charm. And then they say, now, that's it too. <laughs> that's the spirit of her. They, they can't see it. What is worrying you is not physical. But I lift my hand over you. On the authority of the one who died and rose again. I rebuke that yoke in the name of Jesus Christ. All those extensive oppressions. Every night they come. They are, you want to sleep. Something is pressing you. J -j 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 Jesus. Th that's how you wake up. I did church you. And I talk to people. Look at me straight. I'm talking to you. You know you, you are the one. You need deliverance. He said, no, I don't believe in deliverance. <laughs> you believe in it too. You don't believe it, you need it. You don't believe in paracetamol. Why are you having a headache? You need it. Lift your hand. Whatever it is harassing you, is leaving you now. Amen. Another sign is this destiny obstruction. Everywhere you go, road is blocked. What others do with ease takes you a battle. You can't find help. You can't find mercy. Something is wrong. Father, I lift my hand over them. Let today be the day that answers their question. So then what is personal deliverance? Personal deliverance is when you make personal effort to enforce your liberty. You don't outsource it to a pastor. You don't sit down and say, well, let them minister to me. No, you are ministering to yourself. You are fighting and resisting and rebuking until you get free. Isaiah 52 verse 1. He said, awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth, there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Verse 2 is where I'm going to. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Lose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Jerusalem. He said, lose yourself. Don't wait for Lose yourself. Lose yourself. That's what personal deliverance is. 
That you're not watching life swallow you. You're fighting. Are you here? Uh, are you here? Lose yourself. You refuse to die, you know. Hello? Even before we come to help you, start fighting. Lose yourself. Personal deliverance is when the grace in you subdues the forces against you. That's personal deliverance. That you carry grace so tear in the subdued things around. Are you with me? Ah! There was a man in the Bible. The Bible called him the demoniac of Gadara. This man gathered a legion demons inside him. He was uh, a caretaker of devils. <laughs> they, they lived inside him very comfortably. And let me tell you one of the things about him. No bondage could stay in him. The Bible said they bound him with chains. But the things inside him, when they react, chains break. Now, if a man with demons, the reaction breaks the chains physically. You that carry God. Am I talking to somebody here? If you carry enough of grace, they can't put anything on you. I'm sure you have the Bible verse that says, the yoke shall be broken. Because of what? Because of what? Can I tell you what the original Hebrew said? It said, the yoke shall be broken because your neck is fat. There's an extent to grow yourself, the neck will break, the, the yoke will break. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. I want every one of you here to lift up your hand. In the name that's above every name, whatever is around you that needs to break, break now. Yes. Personal deliverance is made when you make your life too hot for the devil to stay. Too hot. Even if, listen, look up. Even a fly that smoke Igbo will not sit on a pot that is hot. No, you didn't hear me. The fly doesn't need advice. As it's coming, wah, and the hot is, pot is hot. What will they do? Even if Satan smoking their hemp, there's a way your life will be on fire. It won't sit down. I'm thinking, is anybody hearing me? They are saying where you carry fire, Satan will sit down. The reason Satan is comfortable is because your life is comfortable. You're a good customer. Charge up yourself. Tell your neighbor, I carry fire. <laughs> this thing you have, is it a neighbor? I beg, find another neighbor. <laughs> Tell a neighbor, I carry fire. Shout it loud, I carry fire. Shout it again, I 